do Frankie, Charlie and maybe Lily not so much, do they understand that you'll no longer be playing football? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Frankie said to me last night, why can't she uh, keep going to the footy anymore? <laughs> uh, so that's because Daddy's not playing anymore. Thank you for all the wonderful matches that you came to and it's Daddy's last game. Please, have you enjoyed? Clearly going for my job. How many years do I have, do you reckon? Uh, not many. <laughs> Frankie Thurston, nine years. I think she thinks uh, everyone goes there to see her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not a shy retiring no, type, is she? No, she's not. So she's, uh, yeah, she's uh, certainly a bundle of joy. Do you think about the fact that Lily won't get to experience that like the other two have? Yeah, it's a little bit uh, sad. I don't even think she's been to a game for oh, Little really? Garland. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, she's always asleep the at third six. I oh, know. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she's pretty much just raising herself. <laughs> no, she's very she's, advanced. She's, yeah. <laughs> Kicking tees, the headgear, how did that all come about? You're almost as well known for that as you are for all your great moments on the field. Yeah, so um, Madison, obviously the headgear sponsor, was um, quite generous to uh, give me one to hand out after each game. After half time, I'd put the headgear on and it would make me cold because it was all sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked them if I could have uh, two for each game, so I could uh, hand one out at half time and then have a fresh one. And then um, the, the tees, I think uh, Daryl Halligan uh, did it with Dan Carter, and was quite well received and uh, he sends a box full of, of tees, so I sign them and hand them out as well, so it's been really well received. So many of the videos of you giving your headgear to kids have gone viral, you know, their reaction, their faces. Are, are there any that stand out and that have had a special impact? Yeah, there was an origin one. Um, you know, you, you hand the headgear and you give them a high five and then you sort of walk off and then I think it might have been that night or the next day I've seen uh, on social media the actual reaction after I'd walked off and um, that, that's one that stands out. There was this little boy um, at Parramatta. Um, I handed him the headgear and just ran off. And when I got inside to do the uh, press conference, uh, the journo asked, oh, did you see what the kid did with your headgear? I was like, oh, nah. He goes, oh, he threw it straight back over the fence. <laughs> the dad rang the club and said he's uh, a germaphobe. And when I handed it to him, it's obviously sweaty and all disgusting. So he's just chucked it back over. And then um, the following week, I think we might have been playing in Penrith. So took him to the game there and um, yeah, got a photo and presented him with a jersey as well. So yeah, they're probably the two that stick out. How many selfies do you reckon you've done? <laughs> like, around about? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> but yeah, there's been a lot. Sometimes I don't have the camera around the right way. And they, <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot quicker and easier if I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fan mail, what's the weirdest bit of correspondence you've received? So a manager got an email uh, from a lady and uh, she was looking for a sperm donor. <laughs> um, she had uh, this list of uh, characteristics uh, that she wanted in the sperm donor <laughs> and um, Obviously, I was at the top of the list. <laughs> Question one, what were her list of characteristics? Uh, um, I don't know, I was too busy in stitches from laughing <laughs> that someone would uh, go through that trouble. Question two, I thought you were a generous giving person. <laughs> I am generous in giving, but not giving of that. <laughs> Coaching, is that something that you would like to get involved with? Uh, yeah, not at this stage. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, when I was injured last year I did some work with the coaching staff and it just really opened my eyes up into how much they live and breathe footy um, and I don't have that uh, drive uh, to, to, to do that. I walked out of there thinking, you are special people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very polite way of putting it. Yeah. Very. Yes. Okay, stay with me on this one. 
Politics. Would no. you? <laughs> Is that only because of what happened in Canberra over the past couple of weeks? Uh, Honestly, though, in terms of making a difference where you can genuinely change things and really make a difference, you wouldn't even consider it. No. No, no. smart man. No, no. no. It'd be worse than coaching. I think, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I've got uh, no desire um, uh, in politics, and um, I think I can make more of a difference. Uh, away from politics. Are you more proud of what you've done on the field or what you've done off it? Uh, definitely off it, yep. Not even a question? No, without a doubt. Yep. Why? I think it's probably speaks about the, uh, the person that I've become. You know, rugby league's been a big part of my life, but uh, to make a difference in the community, that's what I'm more proud of. After next week, you're no longer a footy player. That's all you've really ever been. Are you scared? Uh, not scared. Um, I'm actually a little bit excited about the next chapter of life. I do speak to a sports site quite regularly too, so no doubt uh, she'll be getting punished over the next couple of months uh, to make sure I'm, in, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the right frame of mind. Um, but you know, I'm content with the decision uh, that I've made. I've known since you know, last year that this would be my final year and, you know, it's been overwhelming uh, this year, so that's been a very humbling experience as well.